So we dug into the latest strategic climatological assessment for northern Eurasia and well, the main takeaway is pretty stunning. It is. The entire continent is about to uh, effectively split in two. We're looking at the window from December 18th to the 27th. And the sources are calling it the Great Eurasian Weather Divergence. It's exactly as dramatic as it sounds. You've got this very mild, stormy west smashing up against a severely frigid deep freeze east. A huge continent-spanning split. And the mechanism driving it isn't just, you know, a strong cold front. It's something much bigger. You're much higher up, right? We're talking 30 kilometers up. Exactly. What on earth is happening in the stratosphere that's causing this much chaos down here on the ground? It's a, well, it's a statistical outlier event. An unusually early and very major sudden stratospheric warming, or SSW. Okay. Basically, a huge high-pressure system forms way up there, and it physically collapses the polar vortex. Which is what normally keeps all that Arctic cold locked up at the pole. Precisely. This SSW event just uh, opens the door and lets all that frigid air spill southwards. And that sets the stage for the whole divergence. It does. So on the western side, think UK, Western Europe, they're stuck in what's called a maritime storm regime. Because of a strong positive North Atlantic oscillation, so they're getting soaked, not frozen. Totally soaked. They're dealing with back-to-back -back named storms, Bram, Chandra, Dave. And a lot of them are bomb cyclones. That sounds intense. What does that actually mean for people? It means extreme intensity. We're talking pressures dropping to like 930 millibars. Wow. That's tropical cyclone territory, but it's happening in the North Atlantic mm. in December. So the primary risk is severe river flooding, fluvial flooding, and local flash floods. And here's the paradox, right? In the middle of these monster winter storms, the temperatures are actually high. Yeah, five to 10 degrees Celsius above normal. So it's warm and dangerously wet. Meanwhile, you shift your focus just a bit east to Eastern Europe, Russia, and it's the complete opposite. The exact opposite. A severe continental winter regime. You've got Moscow hitting lows of minus 12 Celsius. And it's not a brief cold snap. The report calls it a plateau of persistent cold air. It's entrenched. And that's where the real strategic danger is. You have this warm, wet hammer from the west about to hit a solid, frigid block of ice in the east. So that meeting point, that thermal gradient, that's the flashpoint. That's the most dangerous feature, yes. When all that moisture-rich air from the west slams into that sub-freezing continental block. We get a phase change. A catastrophic one. Freezing rain, ice storms. The assessment talks about ice accumulation so heavy it can snap utility poles. It paralyzes everything with black ice. It's an infrastructure nightmare. So let's connect the dots. How does a globally warming planet lead to these, I mean, more intense cold snaps and floods? It seems counterintuitive. It's all about Arctic amplification. The Arctic is warming much faster than the equator, so that temperature difference, that gradient, weakens. Which lets the jet stream get wobblier, more wavy. Yeah. Exactly, more meridional. That waviness lets events like the SSW have a much bigger, more dramatic impact further south. And the warmer air itself becomes fuel for the storms. We're seeing the clausius clapeyron relation here. You are. Warmer air just holds more moisture, period. When that moisture condenses, it releases a huge amount of latent heat, and that just acts like rocket fuel for these storms. It supercharges them. And there's a really tangible consequence of that, isn't there? The whole no. risk profile for hail is changing. The case of Storm Adele in Greece is the perfect example. Right. The warmer Mediterranean waters are now supporting these incredibly destructive, warm-type storms. They produce exceptionally large, hard hailstones. So maybe fewer small hailstorms overall, but the ones that do form are monsters. The catastrophic monster. They saw damage to Greek olive groves, ranging from 20% loss to, in some places, nearly 100%. So bringing this all together, what does this mean for you? The strategic implication seems clear. This dual regime happening at the same time creates massive resource fatigue. It's a huge stress test for emergency services, for logistics, for the entire energy grid across Eurasia. And the ultimate irony here is that through all of this extreme weather, the global average temperature was still holding steady at 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. That's the profound part. Climate change isn't just a slow, uniform warming. In these critical convergence zones, it's making extreme winter events far, far more intense. The assessment concludes these extremes are now part of a new, highly volatile atmospheric normal. They are. So the provocative thought we want to leave you with is this. 
If this kind of dual hazard system, the deep freeze meeting the supercharged warm storm, is the new normal, what happens to our infrastructure, which was only ever built to handle one of those extremes at a time?